Hello, everybody. This is Ryan from I Try Running Programs. And today's video is focused on the marathon training program that I will be using for really the entirety of 2023, which is the Personal Best Marathon Training Program developed by Hal Higdon. Um, so if you've seen any of my videos on my channel, you know that a, a lot of my training has been done using Hal Higdon's plans. Even before uh, using this channel, I used to have a an old book that was put out by Runner's World that had tons and tons of plans developed by Hal Higdon. So I'm a big fan of the way that he designs training programs. Uh, and that's really the reason that I tend to lean towards using what he's already developed. Now, with that being said, there's some things to keep in mind that are a little bit different about this particular program. First and foremost, this is kind of a program that's been added together uh, from two previous programs that he developed, one of which he doesn't even host on his site anymore. And the first would be his Intermediate One Marathon Training Program, which was an older version of it, and then also his base training program uh, at the intermediate level as well. So if you've seen some of my videos, you know that most of them focus on kind of advanced marathon programs, and that's really just due to mileage. I think any program could be modified for any level of runner. So we're, we're kind of splitting hairs in terms of terminology here. But in that case, that is something to consider. If you're somebody who's maybe a little bit new to marathon, you might want to pick a different plan. If you're somebody who's more advanced than I, who's currently a 326 marathoner, 129 half marathoner, you might pick something that either has more mileage or far more speed work. So with that being said, what does this plan really do? What does it call for the runner to do, I should say? And this is a plan that focuses on five runs a week, one day off, and then later into the program, one day of cross training. And this is actually semi-inaccurate because really the first, I think about eight to 12 weeks actually has six runs on the table. So there is some uh, days, there are some weeks that have scheduled six runs. For me, in my methodology of using this plan, I'm going to have two minor adjustments to it that should be relevant to the to the viewer here. Firstly, the cross training days, I am just going to replace with a five to six mile run. So I will be running six days a week using this plan. Secondly, because of where my marathon falls on the schedule, right now we're in mid-April as of me recording this video, and my marathon is middle of December. So it's actually roughly about 33, 34 weeks away. And you can see that the length of this program is 30 weeks long. So I'm actually going to be adding almost like a mini taper week every nine to 10 weeks or so, so that I can space this program out long enough to just use it for the entire year, get all the mileage and speed work in that I need to prep for my marathon, uh, which I'll, I'll talk about a little bit in this video, but I'll talk a lot more about in a separate video. So with that being said, what does this uh, program really look like on a week by week basis. Now, I'm going to kind of jump between this program and the advanced one marathon training program, because on the advanced one program, what you'll find is that Hal does a really good job of detailing what a uh, certain activity or exercise should look like. Uh, and this is most relevant for really workout related days. So your tempo runs, your fart legs, your hill workouts, kind of how he prescribes them to be done as a runner. So I'll jump back and forth to give you some of those definitions so that you have a, as complete of a picture as possible when using this program. Now, what you'll find is that a lot of his weeks, he's focused on Monday and Tuesday being a short or an intermediate run somewhere in the three to seven mile range. And then as the program gets a little bit uh, further towards the end, about week mm, so about week 13, this is when the cross training starts to jump in. So a lot of the early part of your week is just really short, easy runs, just meant to kind of get the legs going a bit, get the lactic acid out, things of that nature, and just to keep you a little bit fresh. In the early part of the training program, you can see he focuses on using about three to five repetitions for hill workouts. Uh, in the way that Al talks about hill workouts, I'm a really big fan of, and I I love this methodology. So you can see what he recommends here is that loosely what you should do for a hill workout is you should find a hill that's roughly maybe a quarter of a mile, a little bit longer. I personally run much longer hill workouts, usually half mile to a full mile long hills, just given that I, I want that extra amount of mileage for my program, my own personal training. But you can see that really what he wants you to do is to find a hill that's not too long 
and run it at about 400 meter pace. So he wants you to really kind of sprint the hill for lack of a better way of putting it. And the way that he recommends also breaking down the repetitions is doing a hill rep up and then coming back down and resting on the way down, hill rep up, doing that two to three times and then running one of the reps down somewhat hard. Now, I will admit I don't do that quite as much as probably he recommends. And the number one reason being is that in my particular case, the marathon that I'm running this year is relatively flat. So I'm not too concerned about like kind of learning how to run downhill fast. I'm just looking to build up the strength in my legs. So the uphill reps are, are really what are important to me. And that's why I'm going to focus on this. I'll slightly deviate from Hal's recommendation there, but really not by much. And it's also another way to pick up some extra mileage. Now, later in the, the kind of cycle here, he starts to do a lot of um, kind of shorter interval base training. Okay, so kind of your eight by 200s, your six by 400, 10 by 200, and some, you know, really kind of jumping back and forth between your 200 and 400 meter repetitions. I don't think that needs a, a, a ton of focus. Generally speaking, you're, you're running these fast, you're running them pretty darn hard, and then you're recovering in between them. What I personally do is run the repetition and then I go ahead and I do my rest for that same length of distance. So if I'm running a 200 meter interval, then I will then rest for 200 meters of intervals by just jogging in between and then pick it up again. So I'm not a big track workout guy. Um, and that's really just based on from where I live. It's just easier for me to just walk out my front door and just go running. And so I just track on my watch 200 meters, stop, rest, do it again, and just keep that repetition going until I hit all of the reps. Now, interestingly, as we get further down into the program, he replaces one of those days with speed work with just kind of easy running. So this is where the cross training days, I might toss in a rep there. But you can see he starts to add more pace-based running as we get further down into this as well. And a lot of races to check speed. I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. In terms of tempo runs, you can see in the early part of this particular training program, he has you jumping between tempos and fartlek runs. So the way that he describes a tempo run is, is relatively straightforward. He's looking for you to run around a 10K race pace. Uh, you might go a little bit faster. In some cases, I probably run a little closer to 5K race pace, if I'm being honest with myself. But I'm one of these runners that increases in pace relatively quickly through a, a marathon training program, because most of my running year round is really just all out base building. It's just running miles at a pace that I feel comfortable with until I get into a training cycle. So for me, it's sometimes hard to find a good training pace. I did have a viewer who made a really good comment that he felt like at some in some points of my training, I was just running far too fast. And so I'm going to take that advice to heart and try not to overdo it in my tempo runs. But by and large, you know, I'm just going to try to be a, a little bit careful here in terms of how I'm running, but I'm still going to try to run them fast and allow myself to go above 10K race pace uh, if I'm feeling good that day. Might as well get that training stimulus to take place. In terms of fart licks, I'll kind of notates them in a few different ways. Firstly being that, you know, it's really kind of up to you to, to treat it truly. Fartlek in Swedish, if I'm getting this correct here, essentially means speed play. And so you're trying to, to kind of uh, work with your aerobic and anaerobic systems by just kind of playing with how fast you're running. I personally am a structure type guy. So I will do them in more of a pyramid style where I'll start with, you know, one minute hard, one minute of rest, two minutes hard, two minutes of rest, and so on and so forth until I kind of plateau up to five minutes and then work my way back down that ladder. That works for me, but really, you know, how gives you kind of the, the full right responsibility to run these really however you want. So that's something to consider as well when you're thinking about these fart legs and you start to add more and more time to them. You know, if you have a stretch that you really like to run hard in your training, go do it. It's really up to the runner. OK, so then as we go through the program, you can see that Thursdays are essentially uh, another short running day. They never go above five miles on Thursdays. And then Friday stands as a rest day for the entirety of the program. On Saturdays, there are some rest days when you are going to do kind of a, a pace check race. OK, and this is one of the reasons I really like this program. And I wanted to try this program is there's some race 
distances here that I've never run before, including the 8K and the 15K. And I've never truly run a, a structured 10K race. So obviously you do a lot of 10Ks in training uh, as build up in a marathon. So I, I you know, I have a, a relative like, you know, unofficial PB for a 10K, but I might pick up a race there as well. It's just going to pick up on a lot of these. I would say realistically, I'm not going to race race, like go actually sign up for a race just because of scheduling between me and my wife's schedule. Uh, but it's it's going to be fun to try these kind of all out race paces for some of these distances that I've, I've never tried to run hard before. So it'll be, it'll be a lot of fun, in my opinion. That's one of the reasons I picked this program is it's giving me a lot of time to train, but it's also giving me some things that I've never really tried doing before. Now, Sundays, if you're not racing, are your long run days. And you can see that they start pretty pedestrian in about the six to nine mile range for the first half of the program. So there's really no major super crazy long runs until the back half of the program where you start to pick up into the double digits. And this is where you start to see more 12 mile runs, 15 mile runs, 18, and then ultimately peaking into two 20 mile runs in the last five weeks of this training program with naturally the 30th week being when you run your marathon. So there is one minor thing to add here when it comes to long runs with um, how Higdon's kind of way of viewing it is two things here. One, he recommends really for most runs that are not speed work days that you run them slow and you take them nice and easy. You know, naturally 30 to 90 seconds as he writes here below your marathon pace. Now, there are kind of some of these three one runs that he notates where you could run maybe the first, let's say if it's a 16 miler as he uses here in his, in his example, you could run the first 12 at a relatively normal, easy pace. And then the final four miles could be somewhat faster, not your race pace, but maybe a little bit closer to your marathon pace. So you can see this is a very long program. It, this is a program that I think could really work for your novice and intermediate runner just as much as it could work for your more advanced runner. Um, I don't think there's a wrong way to do this program because there's a lot of adjustments you can make here in terms of using cross training days as an additional form of speed work or just using them to add more easy miles. I'm just going to really play it by ear and see how my body feels and use those days to kind of uh, play around a little bit with the training to, to get the best and the most out of it that I can. So with that being all said, kind of how do I plan on utilizing this program? Well, I'm using it to train for a marathon in my neck of the woods here in California. It is the Zombie Runner Quarry Lakes Marathon. It's actually a half road, half trail run, but it's very, very flat. And it's primarily on road and crushed rock trail. So that makes it, you're not trying to kind of do any single track or anything too crazy. This can be a very fast course. If you see kind of scroll down a little bit here, the course records for the marathon are actually pretty fast. Both the male and female runner have put, you know, at three or sub three for the fastest time. Now, this is kind of a unique course in that it has a lot of kind of twists and turns and, and out and backs, but there's not a lot of hills. The way that they describe this course is that it's flat and fast. So that's going to make this program, I think, work for this particular type of marathon quite well. So what I personally do on my channel, if you're a new viewer, is that I actually break these down week by week. So I give kind of this overview video of kind of what you're, you're seeing, what you're working with as a program. And then I walk you through each week as I do them to give you a better understanding of how it felt, kind of how I'm progressing as a runner through the program, so if you're someone who really likes the statistics and the finer details, then you can kind of follow that week by week as I upload videos for that. So overall, this is the personal best program. I think it's very simple to understand. Not a lot of differentiation in terms of how we do speed work, only three or four different types of speed work, but I think a program that could be useful for really just about any level of runner. So I hope this gives you a decent overview of the program and how to utilize it. And I look forward to seeing you in future videos. Take care.